Our first order of business was to stabilize Morty by taking him out of shot. How do you do that? First, make sure he's warm. Secondly, introduce fluids into his bloodstream, raising his blood volume and his pressure. Third, you may choose to eject the corticosteroid, which could potentially reduce any edema or swelling in the brain, brain stem, spinal cord. Once all that stuff is done, usually they become shock free. Once they're shock free, then and only then can you deal with them. They go average size at around nine pounds, probably about a six foot four, six foot five inch wingspan. It's called a bald eagle not because it looks like he has a bald head. Bald is an old English word spelled B-A-L-D-E, which means white. A bald eagle is a white-headed eagle, but it takes a while for a bald eagle to attain a white head. When bald eagles are less than three years old, their heads are brown, their beaks are black, their bodies are brown and white, their tails are brown and white. They approach maturity between three and five years of age, and they change to advertise that fact. Their eyes get lighter in color, their heads turn from brown to white, their bodies turn brown, their tails turn white. Benson's an adult bald eagle, probably about 17 years old or so. Bald eagles are called fish eagles or sea eagles. There are over 50 species of eagles worldwide. 11 of them are fish eagles. They live everywhere except for Antarctica, and for some reason there are none in South America. But they live in Europe, Africa, Asia, and in North America. Because he's a fish eagle, bald eagles are found practically always around major bodies of water. Because they eat primarily fish. So even though he can fly at over 100 miles an hour, which means he can take the fastest duck right out of the air, and they do that on occasion. He'd rather sit in a tree above a lake or a river, above his favorite stream, whatever, wait for a fish to swim to the surface, then glides out of the tree, tucks his wings back, as he approaches the water, he drops his legs, and when he's above the fish, he makes a grab for it. One snatch with very powerful feet and long, powerful wings, he's off the water, he's gotten his fish, and the only thing he's had to do to catch that fish is get his feet wet. Bald eagles are extremely good at what they do. It is not that difficult for them to survive if they have good fishing spots. Half the world's bald eagles live in Alaska. The other half live in Canada in the lower 48 states. We used to have 25,000 breeding pairs of bald eagles south of Canada. By the mid-1960s, 417 pairs remain. Today, it's hard to know exactly how many there are, but suffice it to say, a conservative number would be at least 10,000 breeding pairs of bald eagles south of Canada. They have come back, and they have come back for a number of reasons. Not reason number one, in the 1970s, they were placed on the federal endangered species list, which protected their habitat. Greatest threat towards all wildlife. Anytime, any place, always has been, always will be. Loss of habitat. No place to live. Wildlife will disappear and go extinct. Number one, reason for extinction. We cleaned up water pollution. Water pollution peaked in the United States in the 1960s. A lot of dead lakes and rivers then supporting little life, little fish, no fish, no food, no food, no eagles. We stopped using DDT, devastated the chemical pesticide washed into the watersheds into the fish, bald eagles ate the fish, accumulated the toxins so badly that they could no longer hatch out eggs because their eggshells were so thin. And finally, we actively reintroduced bald eagles to where they used to live in the past. New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania have all had bald eagle reintroduction projects. They have all been successful. I'm native to Pennsylvania. I lived in Massachusetts for almost 10 years. I returned back to Pennsylvania in 1984. There was one nesting pair of bald eagles in Pennsylvania in 84. In New York State, there may have been four nesting pairs. Today, there are about 200 nesting pairs in each of those states. And to me, it's nothing short of a small miracle because when I was a kid, I have a prayer seeing a bald eagle. We do today, our children do, our grandchildren do. It's just an amazing comeback because people have put a lot of time and effort into bringing these magnets. She has bonded to me over the past four years that I have been working with her. When I say bond, I use that word extremely loosely. Birds of prey aren't your pets. They're not affectionate by nature. They don't love you, yet they become used to, comfortable with, and very secure in the presence of their handlers. They aren't quite wary of people that they're not used to seeing on a regular basis. I call this a bond that I keep it going for a number of reasons, not the least of which, Julia might live to be over 40 years old, she's 14. She has the potential to outlive me, the time that we do have together, I don't want her to be fearful of me, because in fear, Julia might strike out with those feet. And I told you earlier, a three pound red tailed hawk puts her foot in your arm, you can't get it out, 14 pound golden eagle puts her foot right through your arm. No problem at all. Back talent can approach three inches long. She can grip it over a thousand pounds per square inch. So what does all this stuff mean? It means this afternoon, Julia could reach out, grab your hand, squeeze, put four holes right through your hand, keep squeezing, and crush some bones inside. All of them a 14-pound bird. So picture this. 
When Julia was flying free in the wild, she could dive through the air at at least 150 miles an hour, but probably approaching 200. Have you ever stood near an interstate highway and watched a car go zooming by 20 feet away? Triple it. Picture a golden eagle with a seven foot wingspan zooming past you three times faster than a car is passing you on the highway. She's after a jackrabbit in the desert. She breaks hit the rabbit. Now she's only flying at 90 miles an hour. So let's get slammed with this 14 pound feathered brick with eight sharp knives attached to 90. And at the moment she makes impact, she squeezes in a thousand pounds per square inch. And now you have some idea <laughs> That's a good girl. <laughs> of the absolute destructive power of this particular bird, because this afternoon you are quite fortunate to be looking at the most powerful bird in the United States, and certainly one of the most powerful eagles in the entire world. This particular bird sustained nothing more than a concussion. We usually can fix concussions. We have medicines to do that. The problem is that for some reason, you never see that she's not flapping around. Don't, we're not going to get that lucky for the rest of the birds. Any more than Bill Streeter did this. Okay, they just they do that sometimes. So this bird does not flap around, and it's not because she can't. She won't. She simply <laughs> will not fly. I can make her fly. Um, I could drop my hand and she will fly, but she never ever chooses to. I suppose it's kind of like if you hit your dog with a broom really hard, he'll be afraid of brooms. Maybe he's afraid of flying because the last time he did, he got hit by a car. I really don't know. It's kind of anthropomorphic, but I can't explain why the bird won't fly. There's nothing anatomically wrong with anything from, from the neck down anyway. So she is a really beautiful little red screech owl. And she's, she's a wonderful addition to our wildlife center. And I, I don't know whether you have heard this before today, but there are two purposes for having these birds in education. One is there is no experience like being this close to the real thing.